hectic in the Twin Cities. In the car, at home, or on the job. It's good to know you've got WLTE, Light FM 103. Relaxing light music that never gets in the way of what you're doing. All your favorites back to back, with less talk. For soft, light music you can enjoy for hours at a time. Wherever you are, there's only one. Light FM 103, WLTE. You're watching today's WCCO television with Brad Good and Amy Marsalis. This is the 10 o'clock news on Channel 4. Good evening. Not long ago, a North Dakota teen made nationwide headlines with his resolve to recover from a farm accident. John Thompson. Now another North Dakota teen has lost an arm, this time in a car wash accident. 15-year-old Joshua Zimmerman of Grand Forks is in the Twin Cities tonight, recovering from surgery to reattach that arm. Scott Reynolds tells us how it all happened. Joshua Zimmerman was at work yesterday afternoon at the Valley Dairy Car Wash in Grand Forks. He got caught in an industrial dryer that tore his right arm off just above the elbow. A co-worker of Zimmerman's who watches Rescue 911 said that TV show gave him some ideas along with what he had learned from stories about John Thompson, the North Dakota boy who had two arms reattached in the Twin Cities in January of this year. The co-worker ran to a convenience store near the car wash, got a box full of ice, and put Zimmerman's arm in it. And Zimmerman got more help from a medical plane that just happened to be in Grand Forks, saving one and a half hours in his trip to St. Paul. There happened to be a flight ambulance service out of Fargo that was, had dropped off a patient, and just by a stroke of luck, they said, you know, that Josh was coming in. Can you hang around for a while? Zimmerman spent about 12 hours in surgery overnight here at Ramsey Medical Center. And his surgeon says that the prognosis for Zimmerman's arm is fairly promising and that no further surgery is scheduled. And barring complications, Zimmerman could return home to the Grand Forks area in less than two weeks. Scott Reynolds, WCCO Television News. And we'll give you an update on Joshua's progress tomorrow. Amy? Tonight, Minneapolis arson investigators are looking for leads in a fire that burned four Swanson meat trucks in a minivan early this morning. Arson investigators say they believe flammable liquid was poured into the cabs of the vehicles and then ignited with a lit paper. The vehicles were also sprayed with graffiti. Messages included, meat is murder and animal hearse. Police say there are no suspects and no witnesses to the crime yet. St. Paul police say a woman who was just stopping by a convenience store with her six-year-old son was shot by two fleeing robbers tonight. It happened in the McAllister Groveland neighborhood at this Tom Thumb store on St. Clair. Police say two gunmen held up the store and fired a shot not hitting anyone. Then as the gunman ran out of the store, a woman and her son pulled up in their car. One of the robbers shot right through the windshield, the bullet hitting the 33-year-old St. Paul woman in the shoulder. It narrowly missed her six-year-old son. She is in surgery at St. Paul Ramsey. Tomorrow, a crime that's 17 years old will make headlines. A man convicted of murdering two FBI agents in 1975 in South Dakota will have his case heard in a federal appeals court. Leonard Peltier's supporters say he was wrongly convicted on false evidence. Canada also has an interest in the case. Canadian lawyer Diane Martin was one of the speakers today at a rally in conjunction with the screening of a film about the case called Incident at Oglala. She says false evidence was used to extradite Peltier from Canada. The extradition of Leonard Peltier from Canada was a fraud on the Canadian court, and maybe even worse than that, although that's bad enough, it's contributed to the imprisonment of an innocent man for almost 17 years. Arguments begin tomorrow morning in St. Paul. Also, the FBI is investigating alleged civil rights violations against Native American Indians at the Hennepin County Detox Center. Allegations range from physical abuse to racial slurs and theft. Officials at the Detox Center and at the Hennepin County Attorney's Office say they have no knowledge of the investigation. Some 75 members of the gay community today took their complaints about the Catholic Church to the street. They rallied in front of the Chancery in St. Paul to demand that Archbishop John Roach speak out against the Vatican stand on gay rights. Brad. A few stories of note from around Minnesota. A train derailment in North Minneapolis this morning looked a lot worse than it actually was. Several cars fell off the tracks near Victory Memorial Drive and Humboldt Avenue. A large amount of wheat was spilled, but no one was injured. Railroad officials do not know what caused the derailment. 
An Awatana man died this afternoon in Minneapolis after the car he was driving was struck by another at Highway 13 and Washburn Avenue in Burnsville. 41-year-old Christopher Stout died a short time after the wreck at the Hennepin County Medical Center. A rural Staples man died when his pickup truck ran off a highway and rolled near Hewitt early yesterday. Police identified the victim as 42-year-old Kenneth McGrain. And a Chatfield man died last night after his truck rolled over on Olmstead County Road. The state patrol says the victim, 22-year-old Ronald Allen, was a passenger in that truck. Also, a 30-year-old Crane Lake man drowned yesterday in Crane Lake. Police say the unidentified man fell into the lake and was overcome by the freezing water. Amy? In political news tonight, President Bush is back at the White House after a weekend at Camp David. Meantime, some Republicans are suggesting President Bush pardon former Reagan official Casper Weinberger for his role in the Iran-Contra scandal. Senator Bob Dole said on the CBS news show Face the Nation that he believes the Iran-Contra special prosecutor was wrong. And it seems to me it was uh, uh, outrageous that they would have this indictment of Weinberger with a note sort of bringing uh, George Bush into the loop the Friday before the election. I think there ought to be an investigation. Special Prosecutor Lawrence Walsh, who's a Republican, denies any wrongdoing. As for President-elect Clinton, he is learning about the ever-present pack of journalists that follow a president. Clinton has been jogging pretty much all alone throughout Little Rock for the past 12 years, but now he has a full complement of Secret Service and, of course, the pack of journalists. He seems somewhat annoyed that he couldn't even just zip into McDonald's for a cup of coffee today without the press. Now, from a news standpoint, his chief of the transition team says one of Clinton's first moves will be to remove the so-called gag rule from doctors on abortion. In other national news, authorities in New Jersey say they've arrested a 22-year-old man in the abduction and murder of a woman who disappeared Tuesday while running errands. Prosecutor Robert Gluck says Scott Johnson of Plainfield was arrested last night at the home of a female friend. That house was about half a mile from where Gail Scholler's body was found yesterday. In world news, a state of emergency has been declared in the nation of Colombia. That comes from the Colombian president after a wave of bombings blamed on leftist rebels that left at least nine people dead and 60 wounded. The state of emergency will be in force for the next 90 days. A spokesman for Greenpeace says a Japanese ship with a cargo of plutonium is on a course that could take it to Portugal's Azores Islands by Wednesday. That ship and an escort vessel left France yesterday, followed by a Greenpeace vessel. Another Greenpeace craft was seized by French authorities as it tracked the freighter being loaded with the plutonium for Japanese reactors. Brad. Well, you've heard of the fictitious RoboCop. Well, now comes RoboDoc, and this time it's real. A Sacramento, California hospital says a surgical robot successfully performed hip surgery today, marking a medical first. The patient is resting in stable condition. The RoboDoc is a seven-foot articulated arm with a drill on the end. So look out for this, Doc, and you thought the dentist was bad. Mm. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, if they can pick up Princess Diana's cell phone calls, they can pick up yours. Dimension reveals who's listening. And then in sports, the de defense's performance for the Vikings is worth another look. How the Vikes rank now after today's game. You're watching the 10 o'clock news on Channel 4. For a snow thrower that will handle any snowfall, we suggest a Toro Power Curve. They're lightweight, easy to handle, and throw snow up to 30 feet. So they're perfect for those times when it really comes down. See the complete line of Toro Power Curve snow throwers at these Toro dealers. to enjoy D'Italiano bread. You can save lots of money shopping at Target, but you also help save something much more important, families. 
Because for years, we've given a portion of every dollar you spend to programs in your community that strengthen family values and promote the future of our children. So no matter what you buy at Target, you take home a good feeling. You'll be surprised at what you can save shopping at Target. Coming up on the 10 o'clock news, Matt Balo and the weather. Sponsored by NSP, the energy to make things better. My dad started this business, and I wasn't about to let it go. Sure, there were some lean times, but uh, we got through it. I made a living for myself and my employees. NSP has helped thousands of businesses save electric costs by becoming more energy efficient. I'd like to think I did make a difference. Okay, you watch the weather, you want to know what you're going to wake up to tomorrow morning, right. what's it going to be like? Looks like it'll probably be more of the same. We should start out with some clouds out there. Temperatures will actually be warm enough that if we do have some showers, there'll be rain showers tomorrow Sorry morning. We We're looking for some clouds out there. We should have temperatures that'll be in the mid to the upper 30s. In fact, there should be a temperature of, oh, about 37 degrees by the time you wake up. And yes, we'll have a few of those scattered showers out there. We do have a storm system that's making its way through the upper Midwest tonight. There's a warm front down to our south. It's pushing some warm air across Minnesota, and that's what's giving us the precipitation out there. It's warm enough across southern Minnesota just to be rain through tonight and through tomorrow. But up to the north, they're expecting one to three inches of snow, as well as the possibility of some freezing rain or freezing drizzle. So there are advisories for a wintry mix of precipitation across the north-central and northeastern parts of Minnesota. If you're driving up that way, plan on spending a little extra time on the road and a little more caution. Satellite pictures do show some heavier clouds tonight down in Iowa. These will be moving into southern Minnesota tomorrow. That's where we'll get our scattered showers in the morning. But right now, within 150 miles of the Twin Cities, the only band of precipitation stretches from about Sandstone through Grantsburg and over to Rice Lake. That's mostly in the form of snow, especially back in Wisconsin. But there could be a little bit of freezing rain mixed in there as well. So again, if you're driving toward the north, please take a little extra care. The high temperature in the Twin Cities is our current reading. 35 has been the high so far. This morning's low temperature was 25 degrees. The normals are 45 and 27, and we've only had a trace of precipitation, of course. That's been in the form of snow, also a little bit in the way of rain. Currently, it's just cloudy. We're at today's high of 35. Yep. The dew point's 32. We have a southeast wind. It's at 13 miles per hour. Temperatures across Minnesota are still below freezing up north. That's why they have the advisory there. But across the southern half of the state, it's warm enough that we'll just see scattered rain showers here. And over the next 24 hours, this warm front should pass to our north. That'll put us in the warm section of this storm. So we should start to melt a little bit of that snow out there. Now, keeping in mind that 32 degrees is the melting point for that snow, we're already melting some snow now. And high temperatures through much of this week are going to be warm enough to continue to melt it in the 40s all the way through Wednesday. We're talking about some serious melting here. And should that snow melt this week, and it probably will, even without the sunshine, you'll have a chance to catch up on some of those fall outdoor activities you probably forgot. If the snow melts, you'll find those unraked leaves that you left out there. You'll probably also find those left out garden hoses. You'll have a chance to take those in. And of course, those scattered kids' toys in the lawn of that family down the street that never fix them up. Well, I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Temperatures are already melting that snow. We'll see 30s and 40s tomorrow, so that will continue throughout the day. Our forecast for the Twin Cities, it'll be cloudy. We'll have some areas of fog and a chance of scattered rain showers with steady temperatures around 35, slowly rising after midnight and a southeast wind at 5 to 15. Then for tomorrow, cloudy, warmer, a chance of scattered rain showers, mainly in the morning with a high temperature of 44, still a southeast to south wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Then tomorrow night, a chance of showers, 37 for the low. And on Tuesday, it'll be mostly cloudy with a slight chance of some sunshine by late afternoon. Don't plan on it being a lot. We'll have a high temperature of about 46 on Tuesday. And Wednesday through Friday, we'll be cooling back down on Friday. We should have plenty of sunshine, but uh, you won't be getting out the suntan lotion then. Highs are going to be dropping back into the 20s by Friday, and it looks like uh, at least it'll be mostly dry through that period. Nor will we be grabbing the suntan lotion till about May, right? Probably May or June. <laughs> right. You're right. Reality. Reality check here. Thanks, Matt. You bet. Thanks, Matt. Well, stay with us. Up next, reporter Tom Stewart of our Dimension Unit reveals who's listening. Modern technology not only makes us more mobile, but also more vulnerable, even at home. Hi, baby. 
Hey, it's Festa Italiana at Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. And things are really cooking Italian. No doubt about it, this is definitely some classic Italian food. In fact, these six new Applebee's Italian dishes are so good, they're practically works of art. Things are really cooking Italian. My dad taught me everything I know about cars. He only got one thing wrong. He never told me to bring my car to CarX for brakes. Yeah, I always went some other place. These guys are real pros. I get quality parts and a lifetime guarantee on my shoes and pads. Well, I always went some other place. Dad, do you think you get expert work like this for so little at some other place? What other place? Rattle, rattle, thunder, clatter, boom, boom, boom. Don't worry, call the CarX man. Monday, Dimension reveals the shocking story of a Twin Cities woman whose life has become a living nightmare. She's become the innocent victim of a stalker. I've got somebody at my front door who, I, who is really dangerous to me. A man so obsessed that he'll stop at nothing to be with her. Okay, could you please send a squad car out? See what her life has been like. Can you not tell me that? And find out what she's doing about it. Tom Stewart goes inside one of the most bizarre harassment cases in years. Monday Night in Dimension on WCCO News. What's he doing? I think he's trying to pass. DHL. Faster. More of the world. This is how you've seen teenager Amy Fisher. Arrested. Set up by a hidden camera. Now, Nancy Glass asks Amy the hard questions. Why should anybody feel any sympathy for you, Amy? How many men did you sleep with? Don't miss this Inside Edition exclusive. Monday night at 1035 on Channel 4. Tonight, Dimension reveals just who's listening when you use your cellular car phone. If you think you're having a private conversation, think again. Even the Princess of Wales learned that the hard way. When you talk on the telephone, you probably take it for granted no one else is listening in. But anyone with a cellular or cordless phone should think again. A couple of high-profile court cases illustrate why. Senator Charles Robb had four members of his staff plead guilty to leaking a transcript of a political rival's phone call. And in Minnesota, former gubernatorial candidate John Grunseth and others are being sued for distributing copies of a taped cellular phone call. The FBI continues to investigate the case. Sources say the case could go to the grand jury as early as this week. Tom Stewart reveals more on Who's Listening? <laughs> Have one, Anyone out there listening? Well, I would say that uh, 70 to 80 percent of all realtors now have cell phones. When you deal on a cellular phone, you never know who might be on the line. I would say that uh, 90 percent of people don't realize that. What would your reaction be? My reaction? I wouldn't be happy. I, I, I think that uh, privacy is an important part of our lives. A closer look reveals modern technology not only makes us more mobile, but also more vulnerable, even at home. Hi, baby. Up. Take baby monitors. Dimension discovered the same system that enables parents to hear their infants also allows outsiders to monitor them. Oh, that's a big girl. <sighs> Anyone nosy enough can pick up the monitor's frequency on an ordinary police scanner. As you can hear, the conversation up there comes through loud and clear. Same with cordless phones. Yeah, they, I think the biggest size was like, I think I got either 18 or 24 months. Very convenient, not just for the user, but also for someone interested in eavesdropping. I got a wedding gift for somebody, and I know it's on sale now, the day show today. Cordless phones, like well, baby monitors, well, use transmitters that can be intercepted up to a few hundred feet away. And how would you know if anyone listened in? I'm just shocked that you can listen in on conversations. I really didn't know that um, those really even existed. person really wanted to 
They could get virtually anything on anybody by listening to a scanner. We discovered this man does it all the time, and what he hears would astound you. There's prostitution, there's drug deals, businesses talking about bidding on contracts. You can listen to police departments talking about uh, sting operations. A lot of hanky-panky, a lot of uh, girlfriends, a lot of uh, mistresses. Does it ever bother you that it's against the law to do that? To listen to No. I believe if it was intended not to be heard that they would have uh, incorporated some means of scrambling it so it wasn't able to be heard. It will pick up cell urns. We found that plenty of stores, like this one in St. Paul, sell the scanners, which come complete with a warning that Mike Dyer says only encourages many customers. All right, if you want to program this one to monitor cellular, typically you would put it in the search mode. So whatever we hear on there right now is a phone call, and it's illegal to listen to. Yes, so we are not going to listen to that. You can take it home and listen to it. To it. You're not going to listen to it in here. Thousands do just that. We sell them to people from truck drivers to uh, attorneys. Why do they want to do this? A lot of people will want to listen to it for a specific, to receive a specific person, like a friend or a relative or a business partner or whatever, and it's impossible to listen to any particular person on this type of a unit. We found out why. Mobile phones use any of 832 channels that switch back and forth as the user drives along. Yet, it does happen. I've heard uh, a friend of mine. Did you ever tell the person? No. No. I'm not a kiss and tell type. Kiss and tell would be putting it politely for the man who taped this call evidently involving one of the most famous women in the world. I can't imagine, you know, what it was that was together on that night. Millions listened in to what's now assumed to be a series of uncomfortably intimate chats between Britain's Princess Diana and this man. You don't mind it, I want to talk to you so much. No, I love it. Never had it before. I've never had it before. The details all pointed to Princess Di, an unhappy marriage. It's just so difficult, so complicated. It makes my life real, real torture. An eating disorder. How much weight have you lost? Why? I'm sure legislation isn't going to keep you strong. References to the royal family. Very silly with Fergie. Are you taking my kidney? Not far down the road, cellular carriers plan to phase in a new digital signal to make these phones more secure. If you've ever had occasion to uh, pick up your phone at home or in business and somebody's dialing a fax machine into your office number and you hear a series of beeps and that's essentially what someone would hear on a scanner. What appointments do I have between them? Uh, Meantime, however, even some who sell mobile phones hesitate to use them. You don't like to do business over them, though, do you? No. Why not? Because people can hear my business. All around the world, I'll speak to you If that really was Princess Di caught in the act, she may be more discreet herself before dialing next time. I'm Tom Stewart for Dimension. Lucia!
When the going gets tough, take a worry-free MLT vacation. The one with a satisfaction rating of 99%. U.S. West Cellular asks, where does all the time go? Well, we can't tell you where the time goes, but we can tell you how to buy it back with service from U.S. West Cellular. How's it going? Right on schedule. U.S. West Cellular, making the most of your time. Halloween, 1991. A massive snowstorm moves through Minnesota. And which radio station do people turn to for fast, accurate information? WCCO Radio, 830, with weather updates. Blizzard warning for me. Traffic reports. A lot of vehicles getting... News. Minneapolis snow emergency. School and business closings. Eden Prairie. This is 272... Public Saint safety. Saint it's the number one priority of the number one radio station in the nation. WCCO Radio. Vikings are still surely enjoying the sweet mm -hmm. taste of victory again, and quite a good record. Have some more good news for you. Chicago just lost in overtime. The Bears wow. lost. Jim Breach, uh, Breach kicked the field goal in overtime, so... Uh, now they're up by more than two and a half. What, three and a half games? They're up by three, four three. games now. Yeah, Vikes over Tampa Bay to win it this afternoon, 35 to 7. How interesting it would have been to be able to take an honest survey of how many people predicted the Vikings could even win seven games the entire season. And the Vikings' defense, they continue to be as dominant as they were from the very beginning of preseason play. Al Noga with a hit on Steve DeBerg early. Carlos Jenkins picks up the ball, takes it in. Jenkins had an interception for a TD last week. And Chris Dolman gets a pickoff today, returns it for a touchdown. That makes it four defensive touchdowns in less than a week. And that is an NFL record, I think. At least there's no one here to dispute that. Well, it is starting to look very familiar. A few touchdowns early, then coast home. This time, a 35-7 final. Mark Rosen visited the Vikings locker room after this week's blowout. He checks in a little early from the Sports Sunday set. Mark, they're going to wrap this thing up early in a couple of weeks if they keep winning. Bears lost again, as we told you. Yeah, they're certainly keeping focus. That's the big thing. As the Vikings keep winning, everyone's really believing. The players have from day one. They expect to win. It's, I said it's a simple philosophy. You go out with tremendous focus and then deliver. We really have not played a, a real bad game yet. In the Detroit game, we had some kicks blocked and that type of thing, but our guys have been up and ready to play 13 weeks in a row, and I think you have to credit Denny with that. More from the Vikings locker room and studio guest Chris Carter, who had a big day today. That's coming up next on Sports Sunday. Also a visit from Wolves newcomers Chuck Person and Michael Williams, and your chance to talk to Sid. Yes, I have to do it every morning. Here's your chance to do it at night. Call 330-9030, that's the Sid Hartman hotline, 330-9030. We'll be with him a bit later in the show, RJ. All right, put the onus on everyone else, right. <laughs> While one of the best players in National Football League history has been forced into retirement earlier than expected, Lawrence Taylor injured his Achilles and ended his career today against Green Bay. Of course, he was going to retire at the end of the season. Taylor had been playing like a youngster since he announced he'd retire at the end of the year, but his Achilles buckled today while rushing Brett Favre. Surgery scheduled for Tuesday, but his career is over. LT's defensive mates turned it up after his injury, harassing Favre into an interception. Rennie Thompson didn't have much trouble breaking Favre's tackle. The Giants didn't have much trouble with the Packers. 27 to seven was the final score. Dallas goes to eight and one, tops in the NFL. Uh, the Vikings, of course, with a seven and two record right behind them. 37 3 over Detroit. Cincinnati, as we told you, defeated Chicago tonight on a Jim Breach field goal in overtime. And Washington came back to beat Seattle 16 to 3. Randall Cunningham watched from the bench today with Jim McMahon showing a little arm strength and a lot of leadership in the Eagles' 31 to 10 win over the Raiders. McMahon threw it for 157 yards and one TD, so Randall will start again next week. The real key for Philly, the ground game with fullback Heath Sherman breaking loose for 81 yards and a touchdown. Herschel Walker also scored one. The Eagles over the Raiders easily by 21 points. The Saints go to 7-2 and two with a win over the winless New England Patriots, 31-14. Phoenix defeated the Rams 20 to 14 in Kansas City on Nick Lowry's 300th field goal uh, in the late minutes of that game beat San Diego 16 14. The Bills are back on top of their game and on top of the AFC East. Jim Kelly hit James Lofton for a couple of scores. Couldn't be more open than he was on that one. 
The Bills and Steelers came in with identical 6-2 and two records, but the Bills won it 28-20 to 20 was the score. Houston, the next foe of the Minnesota Vikings, they're at the Dome next Sunday. Losers to Cleveland today, 24-14. to 14. Other action, Miami wins, shutting out Indianapolis, getting revenge of an earlier loss to the Colts, 28-zip. And it was Denver over the Jets, 27-16. to 16. And congratulations to a Minnesota golfer, Tom Lehman, who tied for third today at the Mexican Open. He comes home with a cool 32 thousand dollars and that's just pocket change after what he's been winning he's gonna have to have a brinks truck to come back to minnesota he's been <laughs> all those winnings are doing very well on the bed congratulations to him we'll be right back now at the minneapolis institute of arts Art of the Plains Indians. Visions of the people, now through January 3rd. is your standard size color print. Then this is Walgreens big super size print. It's 37% bigger. And now Walgreens announces a new low price. 24 super size prints just $5.99 every day. And you still get Kodak color watch processing and next day service. Try them now and get a second set for just a nickel of print. Walgreens film developing. Big prints, little prices every day. It could be about women with international hunks. Or women whose husbands wanted to date hunks. Everybody asks me the same thing. Whatever happened to them, Oprah? Okay, I'm gonna tell ya. Remember this bride left at the altar? Is she still single? Just a minute. Remember this couple who never met but they wanted to elope? Now I can't believe that. And you won't believe it when you hear what happened. But you'll never know what happened to any of them if you miss our 1992 follow-up show on the next Oprah. Monday at 4 on Channel 4. Finally tonight, one of the more famous lines of this presidential campaign was President-elect Bill Clinton's line, quote, I didn't inhale, when he was talking about his experimentation with marijuana in college. Well, now the line has become the butt of yet another joke. It seems yesterday, while golfing, Clinton was seen smoking a big, fat cigar. So today, while out on a walk, a woman asked Clinton what his doctor would say about his smoking. Clinton was quoted as saying, quote, I didn't smoke it. Another man piped in, saying, you mean you didn't inhale? Laughing, Clinton responded, yeah, I didn't inhale. So he's not waffling on this one. He's sticking <laughs> with that line. <laughs> hey, his every move is going to be closely watched from here on out. He's under that's the microscope, it. that's right. Mm, well, it'll be easier to inhale around here the next couple of days. The warmer <laughs> temperatures should be in the 40s tomorrow. That'll melt some snow, maybe a few showers out there. Good. Chuck Person, Michael uh, Williams of the Timberwolves are with Mark coming up here shortly. And, of course, it'll be interesting to see what Mike Ditka has to yeah. say tomorrow. Have a good week, everybody. Good night. Your home, the home you grew up in. To you, it was the most important place on earth. At least, that's how we see it. We're a Diner Realty, a family tradition since 1955. Some radio stations have a strange idea of rock and roll. It's a new one from Skidmark. But 92 KQRS plays the great rock and roll you grew up with and the best new rock tune. Some stations play the same heavy metal top 40 songs over and over and over. KQ plays Minnesota's largest on-air CD library. So compare their playlist, our playlist. KQ 92, Minnesota's home of rock and roll variety. 
Monday, Dimension reveals the shocking story of a Twin Cities woman whose life has become a living nightmare. She's become the innocent victim of a stalker. There's a man in my front door who, I, who is really dangerous to me. A man so obsessed that he'll stop at nothing to be with her. Okay, could you please send a squad car out? See what her life has been like. Can you not tell me that? And find out what she's doing about it. Tom Stewart goes inside one of the most bizarre harassment cases in